Hello and welcome to Ask the Expert, an award-winning daily series from 8.30am to 9am to help small businesses. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments of the live feed. If you need any more advice, join the official Intuit QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook. Accountants and business experts are on hand 24-7. During the live session, we'll be running a poll, so please do engage with it, and I'll reveal the result at the end. If you're on TikTok, check out the Be Your Own Boss competition. Pitch a new business idea, and you could win investment, mentorship, and business advice to help make it a reality. The investment pot is now up to £10,000, thanks to GoCardless adding more from the initial pot from the Purposeful Project. Tag hashtag Be Your Own Boss to enter. So I'm Kim Arnold. I'm a marketing, branding and communication consultant. I'm also author of the book Email Attraction, Get What You Want Every Time You Hit Send. I help small and medium sized businesses cut through all the noise, stand out and get their message heard. And I'm so happy to be here with you today. Now, it's been quite the year, hasn't it? <laughs> this last year, it's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? It's been quite the year. And I was just wondering, how, how has it been for you and your business? So have you managed to kind of pivot your marketing and ridden the wave? Um, you know, you've really turned this year into something special. Or maybe you've kind of just about dog paddled your way to the shore, you know, just about keeping your head above water. Or maybe you felt like you've just drowned and it's just all been too much. Well, it's OK. Wherever you are in that process, it's it's all right. It's okay if your marketing's been a bit neglected. You know, we've had so much to think about homeschooling kids, looking after elderly relatives, looking after your teams. You know, that in itself has been enough. And I hear from so many of my clients that, you know what, marketing has just been pushed down the priority list, but, but that's okay. Because Summer, for most businesses, is a really great time just to reboot. Um, for most businesses, it's the quietest period of the year. So it's a, it's a brilliant time just to step back for a moment, uh, revisit your marketing, and so you can really get back on track for when everyone's back to school, kind of literally and metaphorically, in September. So um, I've got three steps to help you bounce back with your marketing this year to really help you get back on track so that um, you'll be winning more business by the end of the year. So are you ready for my three steps? Number one, step one, and I've got three P's for you to make it easy to remember. My first P is to pause. It's really important that we don't just run headlong into uh, more marketing activities without really thinking if, if they work or not. So take a step back, book yourself a couple of hours, ideally half a day out of your normal working environment. So whether you're at home like I am, um, or if you're back in the office, or maybe you're working from the shed at, your, at the end of your garden, just take some time out, go somewhere different and do a really thorough review of your marketing and your branding. So what kind of things could you look at? Well, start with your clients, your customers. Have a really good dig down into what that profile looks like. So has it changed over the last year? Are there new client segments that you haven't worked with before? Are there some that have completely dropped off the radar for you? Um, have their needs changed? What has changed in their businesses, in their customers, their clients? Really take it time to reevaluate who it is that you are targeting, where your most fertile clients are, and has that changed over the last year? Secondly, have a look at your products and services with, with similar um, similar kind of attributes here. So what's changed? What's doing well? Where are most of your revenues coming from in terms of your products and your services? Um, are there some that aren't relevant anymore? Maybe there are some new areas of opportunity where you've dabbled a bit, but that's actually where you could bring in a whole new service line. So look at your services with really fresh eyes. 
then look at your marketing strategies and your tactics. And I want you to be ruthless here, really ruthless. What is working and what is a waste of time? And I'm looking at you, social media. You know, we tend to put a lot of time and effort into social media and it doesn't always pay off. So should you be doing less, maybe doing it better? Um, what's really hitting the mark? What's not got off the ground? Maybe it's because you didn't have the time. It was too ambitious. You didn't have the, the team to do that. Um, let's get real. Next, I want you to have a look at your brand. So how's it looking? Your visual identity, so your logo, your color palette, your all of those things, and your messaging. Are you really standing out from the competition or is it all looking a little bit tired, you know, a little bit like it needs a fresh lick of paint? So be, be honest, look at what the competition is doing. And then finally, take a look at your pricing, because I know many small businesses, and I heard this from so many of my clients, their initial reaction at the beginning of the pandemic was to slash and burn with their prices, you know, cut, cut, cut. It's like a sort of closing down sale in the high street. But can we recover from that now? If that's what you did, what's your market looking like? Are you pricing effectively? Can you actually even put your prices up? So that's your first step. You have paused. Second step, number two, is to prioritize. Put your, um, your activities into three buckets, things you're going to stop doing, things you'll start doing, and things you're going to shelve. So you're not going to do them right now, but they're important. So you're going to do those next year or at the end of the year or whenever. So stop, start and shelve. And then step three, your third P is to plan, of course. It's about building a plan for the next six months. And the most important thing here is to know that most marketing plans fail. They fail, they die a death. They end up being written, put hours of time into them, and then they get stuck in a drawer or in a file on your computer and they never get looked at again. And that's often because they're too long, they're too boring, they're, you know, head in the clouds, not gr grounded in reality. So you're never going to be able to accomplish anything in them. Um, so um, we need to make sure that everything that we do with a marketing plan is grounded in reality. Short, sharp, do less, do it better. So I'd advise most small businesses a maximum of three marketing strategies. So that might be, for example, content. It might be email marketing. It might be referrals. Um, and then under those three strategies, a maximum one to three tactics. And I know that might not sound very like very much, but you're much better off setting the bar a little bit lower and actually getting stuff done. Because I always tell my clients this, look, the best marketing isn't always the fanciest or the most expensive or the cleverest. It's the marketing that actually sees the light of day. So that's what I want you to do is build a plan that is living and breathing. You look at it every week um, and you're able to really execute on absolutely everything. And then if you want to add more strategies to that plan later, then fantastic. So you paused, you prioritized and you've planned. So you're in great shape. So I'm going to now answer some of your questions. I'm excited to have a look at these. So Mitch on Twitter is asking, hi Kim, what are the biggest mistakes most businesses make with their marketing in my opinion? Well, so it's great to start off with this one actually, because it just follows on from what I've been saying. They try and bite off way more than they can chew. So they're on Twitter and they're on Facebook, they're on LinkedIn, they're on, hey, let's do a bit of TikTok. Um, and then they look at the competition and they go, oh, the competition, oh, they're doing a video, we should do a video too. And um, they get very distracted. I call it marketing magpie syndrome. You know, it's like shiny object over there. Oh, let's go and go and chase after it. And of course, they don't have the resources to do all of this stuff. And it's not grounded in a plan. So do less, do it better. Choose maximum three marketing strategies and really stick to them. And here's a little trick for you. Also build yourself an anti-plan. So that's a list of things that you're not going to do 
and why. So for example, you could have on your list um, TikTok, that's a good one. <laughs> We're not gonna do TikTok because our clients are not on TikTok. And it doesn't make sense. Or we can say we're not going to do TikTok this year because we don't have the resources to do it. And that's completely fine. We will revisit it next year because in the heat of the moment, we get a bit carried away, don't we? We're like, oh, that looks really good. But if we have our anti plan, we refer to it and we go, no, when we were feeling calm and happy and rational, there's a really good reason why we're not doing this. So build yourself an anti plan and it's a great tool to keep you on track. So Jackie on Facebook Messenger, up next, Jackie. We changed our email marketing strategy in the last three months, segmenting the audiences and increasing our touch points. However, I've noticed that our open rate is decreasing and those unsubscribing are increasing. Does this mean it isn't working? And what should we be doing to change the situation? Hmm. It's a good question. Um, now, with any change, I think, in email marketing, you are going to find some people that, that don't like that change. Um, so, uh, you know, people often might say, you know, well, I really liked it the way it was before. Thanks very much. Um, maybe it's the fact that they feel being feeling that like they're being sold to more. So maybe look at the balance between your selling messages and your value messages. If we go too hard on sales all the time, that sales message, people can get a bit turned off. Um, you know, no one wants to be sold to all the time. So make sure you're giving them enough value. So insights, um, tips, um, it doesn't have to be those. You know, make them laugh, make them smile, give them something interesting, make them think. All of these things can be seen as value as well. So get that balance between value and selling right. And hopefully you will see a difference. So um, we've got who we got next. Let's have a uh, look at Jerry on Twitter. He's saying, how do you go about pulling together a strong brand message when you have a bit of a complicated product? Or service. Oh, this is a good one. I work with a lot of very complex businesses with very technical services, um, as, as well as um, lots of others. Um, and um, a few tips for you. Um, first of all, try and ditch your jargon. So try not to use a lot of the um, technical language that you might associate with your uh, with your products and services, particularly if your clients don't use it. So try and use the language of your clients. Um, a great tool, a tip for you is to imagine that you're explaining your service to a teenager. Um, people often say, imagine you're explaining it to your grandma. I always think that's a bit patronizing. I think it's much better. Think about explaining it to a teenager because A, they have really short attention spans. They're going to be you know, picking up their phone before you finish your first sentence. And they're going to want to be talked to in relatable language. So imagine that you're explaining your brand to, to a teenager. Um, really shake out those ideas. Talk to as many people as you possibly can and try, try different things. Um, it's, it's, you know, testing that message is a really great process. And listen to what your customers say, what your clients say, because often the best language is, is their language. So how do they describe what you do? Maybe ask if you've got a friendly client, ask them how they would describe what you do. And that will give you really great insights as well. I hope that's useful for you, Jerry. Um, let's have a look at our next ones. So Hanifa on Facebook Messenger is saying, I like your advice about keeping it simple. Thank you. Um, and only doing a handful of activations at one time. At what point do you think we can scale up from this? And what insight should we be looking for to help us optimize? Um, I think you have to look at when, when are, do you feel like you've really got it going on? Like things are rolling in a very comfortable way. So I would say when you have a routine, so things are just kind of happening, uh, you are finding it um, simple, you are on point, and things are working. 
I think that's that's you know the, the biggest message is to make sure that you have the data, you understand, you're looking at you know email open rates, you're looking at your social media statistics, you're looking at your ad effectiveness. Um, you're looking at how you know many leads you're generating each month, however you you know measure your success. Make sure it's working. That sounds really obvious, but you'd be surprised how many small businesses are doing a lot but not measuring very much. So make sure you're in a routine that feels effortless. Make sure that you're measuring the effectiveness and you're actually hitting goals. So you've got really clear goals. And then at that point, you can start to scale up. Um, but be you know really mindful and ground it always in reality. How many people have I got to do to execute on this, um, and how much money have I got to execute on it? So you know we've got to make sure that we are not living in la la land <laughs> with our marketing, um, so that we're realistic and we get it done and we get it out of the door. Hope that helps, Hanifa. So Nathan, um, you are asking on Instagram, there are lots of different audiences within our customer base. Oh yes. So we're really aware of flexing our tone for each. Any advice on maintaining consistency while still creating room to flex? Oh, that's a really great question. It's one I get asked about a lot and it's one that I work with my clients a lot. It is difficult when you work with a really wide audience and, and I have this in my own business. So I work with everyone from, you know, really big corporates, banks, law firms, management consultancies, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of employees through to small and medium sized businesses. And I also do one on one programs. So I feel your pain, Nathan, I really do. Um, what I would encourage you to do is find a golden thread, because if we, um, particularly for small businesses, if we're trying to um, tailor everything very separately for our unique audience, it can become really overwhelming. And a lot of my clients end up with two or three websites or their, you know, their web or they have one website becomes very, very complicated. So try and find a thread that runs throughout all of your audiences. And it might be, you know, it might take a bit of digging to find this. But once you ground everything in a single very high level message, then that just becomes a little bit easier. And then down from that, you can start to tailor. But the golden thread will help you root all of your marketing in a, um, in a sort of single brand message. And that can really help. Okay, we are on to Martine. Uh, she's asking on Twitter. You mentioned reviewing the branding and marketing we do have. What should we be considering when doing this? So I think I mentioned a bit earlier on, you know, look at your clients, your products and services, look at your pricing, um, and uh, obviously looking looking at your brand. So there's this give you a bit more more detail on this and um, it's about effectiveness and it's about being real we often get a lot of stress in our marketing because we're not grounding it in reality and actually can be quite a relief for a lot of business owners when you're like okay let's just kind of shake it all out it's like grabbing you know grabbing someone turning them upside down and just shaking everything out of their pockets right you know get it all out on the table then we can um really understand what's important and what isn't. So you're looking at, again, going back to data, really review all of your data, what's working, what isn't working, what's changed over the last year. Um, look at the competition, have they really moved on? Are you getting left behind or have they moved closer into your space? I see this with a lot of my clients who might have had a really, really powerful brand, but haven't necessarily updated it for a few years. And the competition is starting to look and sound very much like them. And they need to move their brand forward to create kind of clear water in between. So lots of things you can think about and look at. Um, I hope that helps Martine. Uh, Chloe is asking, I'm really conscious of not oversaturating our audiences, particularly on digital channels like social media. Do you have any advice on avoiding repetition and keeping content fresh, particularly when you may not have enough resources to create new assets all the time? Great question, Chloe. Uh, I was actually just writing about this this week for my, my newsletter. Don't worry too much about repetition. 
because not everyone will see everything that you put out there. In fact, if only, right? If only, if only we could put something out and we were guaranteed that our audience could see it, that would be, that would be wonderful, I think. Um, so we can absolutely reuse our content. Please do, you know, reuse it. Um, cut and dice it up, change it up. You know, could a blog become some tips or become a video or a video could become a blog. It's actually sometimes very helpful as well to repeat the message over and over, particularly if you're trying to educate an audience um, or introduce them to something new, um, a service or a, or a product or an idea, a way of thinking, an approach. So don't be too afraid of repeating your message. Do reuse your resources. I think that's super important. As you say, you know, otherwise you end up putting yourself under huge amounts of pressure just to deliver new content all the time. So you can absolutely reuse and recycle. Um, I, I think it's um, not, not too big of a worry to, um, to worry about oversaturating your audience. People can scroll on by if they think they've seen it before. So um, keep at it, Chloe. I think your instincts are right. Poppy on Twitter, let's have a look. Are there any businesses or particular campaigns that you think really nailed it during the coronavirus pandemic and what can we learn from them? Brilliant, love this. Yes, so many, so many, Poppy. Uh, where do I start? So um, I think Tesco were absolutely brilliant with their um, cool, calm and collected messaging. They wrote the most brilliant emails, um, which were very warm. They showed lots of empathy, um, but they were incredibly clear. So they talked about what they were doing in store to, to make things safe. Uh, they talked about what they were doing to prioritise NHS workers and the elderly. So um, I think we can really learn that sort of um, leadership quality from them and a tone of voice that is so reassuring. It's calm. It's clarity. Amazing clarity. I think they were they were absolutely superb. I think a lot of um, uh, uh, clothing brands actually did really well, um, particularly on email marketing. So um, someone like Sweaty Betty, um, who uh, obviously they, they did very well, I think, uh, during lockdown with everyone doing more yoga and buying loungewear and not wanting to wear any trousers with, God forbid, a waistband. Um, so they did really well, but wow, they really pumped up their email marketing. It was it's fantastic. They use really good subject lines. They're colorful, they've got energy, and there's always something different. There's always a, an interesting hook. So um, I think they've, they've done really well. The businesses I didn't like, and I'm not going to name and shame, but the ones that I think um, really struggled were the ones with the very formal messaging in the email title, a message from our CEO. Um, and you think, my goodness, I've never heard from your CEO in the past. So why should they be emailing me now? I've never heard from them again. Um, it feels like you're just taking advantage here, you know, to check that I'm me and my family are safe and well, but I have no relationship with you whatsoever. So they just sort of dumped an email <laughs> into the ether and I've never heard from them again. You know, that I think really um, doesn't help to generate trust and confidence. So little and often that regular, you know, checking in pandemic or no pandemic, it's about creating a regular relationship with your audience. So I hope that helps Poppy. I'm sure you've got some, some examples too. Okay, so Owen on Facebook Messenger, let's have a look at your question. I think it's time for my business to expand, but apart from the occasional freelancer for set projects, we've never had an in-house comms or marketing team. Would you recommend would you recommend hiring in-house or getting an agency? And what should I be looking for in either? Oh, that's a huge question. I could probably talk for the rest of the day on this one. Um, there are brilliant freelancers out there. And I think for many small businesses, that's a great way of um, dipping your toe in the water before hiring a permanent person. So you could have, you mentioned that you've had the occasional freelancer for set projects, but how about starting with a you know freelancer maybe two or three days a week? So you can just 
see how that feels um, and start there because it's a big commitment, obviously having a, a full time um, employee in, in marketing. So I'd suggest starting there. I think agencies are really good um, for certain certain aspects. So I think when you want to outsource certain projects, when there's particular niche areas of expertise, um, but depending on the agency, it can become quite expensive for small businesses to use agencies um, a lot of time. So I'd advise you have a look at the many brilliant marketing freelancers um, and uh, that can really make a big difference. Just going to answer one more question now. Um, let's have a look. Which one am I going to choose? So many good ones. Um, Usman is saying, I'm in a market where I'm not sure my product has a significant edge over my competitors. How do I create a brand that builds trust and gets attention? Well, not everyone is a unicorn, are they? In fact, very few of us are unicorns. Very few of us are unicorns. Most of us have businesses that are fairly similar to other people. But what we can do is show people how we are different with our tone of voice, with our brand, with the way that, that we speak, the way that we describe things. So I think don't tie yourself in knots trying to find, um, you know, that unique aspect of your your um of your product or services is different. If you've got that, then great. But your how can be different as well as your what. So focus on your approach, your style, your tone of voice, and really make that different. I hope that helps. So we are nearly at the end, but I've got the poll results for you. And we asked you, did your marketing strategy pivot during the pandemic? 50% of you said yes, and 50% answered no. So it's a dead heat. And I hope after this, you realize that um, whichever place that you're in, it's all good. It's never too late to reboot your marketing and get back on track. So thank you all so much for tuning in. If you want to get in contact with me, you can reach out to me via my website, kimarnold.co. Dot UK. And you can also sign up for my weekly emails full of marketing and branding and communication tips and tricks um, that people tell me are the brightest things in their inbox each week. Coming up on RC Expert tomorrow is Erin Patrick, an accountant and QuickBooks expert. Tune in to get advice on accounting and the latest features and tools that will make your bookkeeping easier. And don't forget the Be Your Own Boss competition on TikTok. Pitch a new business idea and you could win investment, mentorship and business advice. The investment pot is now up to £10,000. Thanks to Go Cardless, adding more into the initial pot from the Purposeful Project. Tag hashtag be your own boss to enter. I really enjoyed answering your questions this morning. Have a great day.